good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you here to our services today at the 8th and Harrison Church of Christ. I also want to say happy Independence Day to all of you here. Uh, I see many of you wearing the red, white, and blue. Uh, unfortunately, if you're not wearing that, I'll pinch you, like kind of like St. Patrick's Day, so be prepared for that. But I'm glad that you all are here today. We just have a few announcements before we start our, sorry, continue in our services today. Uh, first of all, there will be a potluck today after services. Uh, we invite everyone to join us, even if you didn't bring a dish. This is a great time for us to be together, to eat some food and fellowship. And so we encourage you after our services to head over to our multi-purpose building and join us for a time to be together. I also want to announce that uh, we're going to have a garage sale in the fall. Uh, and so the sales will benefit the youth group. And so if you want to donate anything to this garage sale or have anything that you uh, want to give or help out in this, uh, contact the church office with items you want to donate or how you want to help. Uh, we're talking about outreach, how we get into our community, and this is a good way for our church to, you know, be in the community, have an event to help bring people in. And so I encourage you to either donate items to be there, or it'd be better if you do both. And so if you have any questions about this, you can ask Annabeth or myself, and we will uh, make sure you get that proper information. Uh, but today, as we continue in our worship service, I encourage you to sing out. You know, we're, we should be happy that we're here. We're glad to be here. But the one that we're worshiping today is God. And so let's give him the praise that he is due this morning and every day in our lives. Like Trevor said, we should be singing praise because just as we celebrate freedom this morning from, uh, or America celebrates freedom, we celebrate this morning freedom uh, in Christ. If the sky's up of your gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem gray, although they threw, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises, grand. Sing, nan, and hey, press along to the goal. Trust in him who leadeth the way, he is keeping your soul. Let the world know where you belong, look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing and you'll be happy today, press along to the goal. Trust in him who leadeth the way, he is keeping your soul. Let the world know where you belong, look to Jesus and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent thy name, how excellent thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heaven, will praise thy whole
join me in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we're so grateful that you've given us this Lord's Day, Father, that we as a church family can come together, Father, and worship you, and we do pray that all we do in our worship will be pleasing in your sight, Father. Father, we have so many blessings, and I pray that we will not be neglectful in thanking you, Father, as you bless us. We thank you, Father, for Ethan Harrison, the blessings that you have given us, Father. And we're so grateful for our elders, Father. And we pray that you be with them in the decisions that they are called upon to make and be with their families, Lord. Father, we're so grateful that Trevor and his wife have come and to work with the congregation here, Father. We pray, bless them, Father in the things that they try to get done here, Father, and may we be an encouragement to them, Father. Father, we pray that you will be with us daily. We know we are weak, and we need you each day, Father. And Father, we pray for those that are having struggle with their health or those that have lost loved ones, Father. May we keep them in our prayers. And Father, we pray for the Pendleton family, the lady that was shot recently at a convenience store. Let your blessings, Father, be on that family, Father. And it's so sad, Father, that we have come to that point that it's really not safe, Father, and sometimes, Father. And Father, as we continue our worship this morning, I pray that you'll be with us and that everything we say and do will be pleasing before you, Father. Christ's name we pray. If you would be standing for the song. Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Troubled soul, the Savior can see every heartache and tear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your Son. Thank you for his love for us. Thank you for his sacrifice. Let us take this bread in a manner pleasing to you. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you for never withholding anything from us. Thank you for the perfect sacrifice. Thank you for your son's spilled blood that washes away our many sins. Let us take this fruit of the vine in a manner pleasing to you. Amen.
Heavenly Father, thank you for all our blessings. Always remind us that they are all from you and to give you glory and praise. Let us give with an open heart, Lord. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Um, today's reading comes from Isaiah 43, 10 to 11. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servants whom I know, who I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me, there is no Savior. Okay, so that was kind of a good good morning uh, we have here today, but I think y'all should be excited. Today is uh, Independence Day, it's July 4th, so I'm going to make y'all do another good morning because we're excited that it's Independence Day, so let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, guys, that's great, that's awesome. I want us to all be excited. It is July 4th, in case you didn't know, uh, and the title screen, it's kind of hard to see because I didn't choose a great picture but it says invest in freedom because this is the day where we celebrate in the United States our freedom from England. Back 245 years ago, it was believed on July 4th that the 13 colonies penned or had already penned and signed the Declaration of Independence. It's where they said they were no longer going to be subject to King George III to England and they were going to be independent and live freely from them. And many people have debated about, was it actually signed on July 4th? It doesn't matter what day it is. This is what we celebrate. We celebrate freedom today. And there are many ways that we celebrate Independence Day. 
Uh, we celebrate it uh, partially because this was the day that the aliens came in to invade the earth, and they were trying to take over everything, but they were brave men like Will Ferrell and Jeff Goldblum who stepped up to fight back against the aliens. Will? Will Smith, well, I don't know what I said. Whoever it is, we know who it is. I'm just kidding. These men right here, this is a movie from Independence Day, a movie, but we celebrate our independence today in many ways. You know, we celebrate it with family, with friends. Our church is celebrating afterwards the potluck, and I invite all of you to join us afterwards for that. Uh, Many people celebrate with parades, with festivals, even fireworks, because what a great way to uh, burn your money and watch it fly off into the sky and explode. So... But we celebrate 245 years of freedom today in the United States. But there is a greater freedom that we should be celebrating each and every day of our life. And it's a freedom that came over a thousand and thousands of years ago. And that freedom that we get to experience today is because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. And I want to talk about that freedom today. So if you all want to open your Bibles, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 2 this morning. Ephesians is in the New Testament, and and as we read today, I want to start with Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And I want you to see what our Bibles tell us this morning. And this is what it starts out as. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. And so I know as we start, I give you a really happy, cheerful passage this morning. But the author, as they're writing in Ephesians, is going to make things a lot better. But he paints a very vivid picture, and he's straight to the point. First of all, the author talks about sin. And to sin is to die. That is the way it works. In this world, we get to choose two things. We get to choose the world, or we get to choose God. And if you choose the world over and over again, if you choose to sin over and over again, it will lead to death. All of us will die at some day, but to choose to sin is causing a spiritual death. You know, you can keep walking around, you can keep moving, but inside you are going to be dead. Many of us might know a famous passage out of the book of Romans, and we read it that says, Romans chapter 8, verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we love to put a period right there. We love to say, like, that's the whole story right there. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And we get stuck on that part. We can't move back past from it. But if we choose sin over and over again, it is going to lead to death because God does not approve of sin. When we talk about a sin, sin, there's a variety of ways to describe it. Some people have said that to sin is to miss the mark, that God has outlined a way of life for us through his word And that when we sin, we're we're just kind of missing what the Bible's telling us. But there's also, when we sin, it's when we know God's word. We've read it time and time again, and yet we choose to go against it. We say, God, we know better than you. God, I want to live my life my way. God, you don't let me have any fun in this world, and I want to do what I want to do. We go against God, we choose the world, and we choose to sin. Because we say that the world offers us so much more freedom, and we love our freedom. We think sin gives us freedom, but in reality, sin steals our freedom. And and you're thinking, what do you mean? How does sin steal my freedom? Well, God gives us so much freedom in this world. He does put boundaries on what we should do, but there's so much life within those boundaries And we say, I know where the boundary is, but I want to cross over that boundary because it's going to be a lot more fun out there. Everyone else gets to do this. Why can't I do that? Why do I have to sit behind this line, stand behind this line? I don't like that. But sin will steal your freedom because once you start to sin, you're going to like it a lot. You start with a little bit here and there, and eventually it's going to consume you. It's going to take over your life. You're going to fall into it again and again and again. And after a while, you're going to wonder, 
why is this so bad? Why is it so bad that if I cheat a little bit here and there? Why, why is it so bad that I, I tell a little lie? I mean, that's not really hurting anyone, just a little lie here and there. You know, we say doing a little bit won't hurt us. Because all in our minds, we have what I like to call the hierarchy of sin. You have your lesser sins and your greater sins. As long as you're sinning down here, you're fine. I can do a little bit of lying, a little bit of cheating. You know, I can even overeat a little bit here and there. You know, I can break a promise that I've made every once in a while. And that's not as bad, because as long as I don't cheat on a spouse, as long as I don't rob a bank, as long as I don't commit murder, I'm fine down here. And that's going to be okay. But all sin is equal in God's eyes. And if we choose the world time and time again, if we choose to sin, we are going to remain separated from God. Just as Romans chapter 8 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. That's it right there. Put a period. That's the end of the sentence. But even in Romans, that's not the end of the statement. We want to put a period there, but that's not the end. Because even as it just wasn't the end for the Ephesians in that passage, in, Roman, er, in Ephesians chapter w- 2, verses 1 through 3, the author gives us a much better life that we can live. That although a lot of that, what the author wrote is past tense, if you didn't see that, they, they used to live that way, they used to be that way, that that doesn't have to be the case anymore. If you keep reading on in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, and then I'll read the verses in Spanish as well, it says, Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. If you don't speak speak Spanish, that's okay. I have the verses up there in English as well. But I want you to hear again what this author says in these crucial verses. He says, Pero Dios que es rico en misericordia por su gran amor por nosotros nos dio vida con Cristo aun cuando estábamos muertos en pecados. Por gracia ustedes han sido salvados y en unión Con Cristo Jesús, Dios nos resucitó y nos hizo sentar con con él en las regiones celestiales para mostrar en los tiempos venideros al incomparable frecuencia de su gracia que por su bondad derramó sobre nosotros en Cristo Jesús. Jesus. Sin steals our freedom, but this is the great part about it. Grace frees us. You don't have to live in your old ways. You don't have to be stuck in your sin because God gives us grace. God loves us so much. I mean, he loves us in, for an amount that I can't even describe. Even when we we do bad things, God loves us. Even when we sin, God chooses to love us. Even for everything that we do, God will still choose to love us if we go back to him. A lot of us have never experienced this kind of love before. We think as soon as we wrong someone, as someone wrongs us, it's over, we're done. But God gives us an incomparable amount of love that we could never fully experience, or that we can never fully understand sometimes. But God loves us. He loves each and every one of you. If there's something that I want you to understand today, it's this. God loves you. Never question that. Never doubt that. Because God loves you. It is incomparable how much he loves us. Although we say we have sin that separates us from God. If you read Romans chapter 8, verses 23 and 24, It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We know that. We read that. 
but it says, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. We get grace because of Jesus. Grace comes through Jesus. And here's how we know that. We talk about freedom that happened 245 years ago in the United States. I'm talking about freedom that happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus was on the cross. I want you to know that in this world, thousands of years ago, Jesus went to the cross to die for your sins. Die for the sins of all humanity. It wasn't just the people who were there watching him be crucified. It wasn't the people who were just in the city. But it was for everyone who lived then, who lives now, who who will live thousands of years from now. He died for everyone. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone. He died so that we could become closer with God. He died so that we could have grace upon grace, and he died because Jesus loves us and God loves us. In our lives, we are called to follow Jesus. And when we follow Jesus, that should develop into a faith, and after we have faith, we should want to be baptized. In baptism, we have ourselves. It's, it's full of sin. It's this murky, disgusting self. But when we go into the baptism waters, we are fully submerged into, the, into those waters and we come out, our old self is gone. The sin that was in our lives is gone. It doesn't hold on to us anymore. We come out as a new creation. We are free from the sin that has been in our lives. We are baptized into the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Because just as he came back to life, we get to have a new life in Christ because he died for all of us. And sometimes those of us who don't know about God don't know that. But for those of us who have been baptized, we forget about that. That we were baptized for a reason. That's because God loves us. But the story doesn't stop there. The author in Ephesians keeps going on because we have freedom and grace. We have freedom in this. He calls us to do something with our lives. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, He says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by work so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork. I like that passage. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I think the authors, they were writing that passage in Ephesians, they wanted to help us remember that we get grace through Jesus, but that salvation alone comes from God. Because only God can save us, and a better way of saying that is only God can free us. We are full of sin, we are full of our selfish desires, but God is the only one who can truly save us. There is not an amount of good works that you can do that will ensure you have salvation. You couldn't give a certain amount of money to something where God says, okay, you're good, you're saved. There isn't an amount of good works where you help someone across the street or you volunteer somewhere that once you hit your quota, God comes down from heaven and says, here's your gold star, you're done. There isn't a certain amount of times that you should go to church, read your Bibles, pray that God says, that's enough for you, you're done. But God saves us by his grace, and God saves us alone. We can't forget that, because if we would like to think we could save ourselves, we'd boast about it. But we don't boast about everything we do. We should be boasting about God, because it is by grace that we have been saved, not by our own work, but it is because of God. We should never forget that. But I also want us to know that God saved us and he gives us something beautiful. Because we all have a purpose. I think a lot of us oftentimes struggle with our purpose. What are we supposed to do in church? What am I supposed to do with my family? What do I do in school? How am I supposed to work? What is my goal in this life? Sometimes we don't know what to do and that absence of a purpose can take us to a very dark place. But God does give us a purpose in this life. And our first and primary purpose that all of us have is that he created us and he wants us to follow him. All of us are called to do that. All of us are called to listen to God, follow him, be baptized. And then the part after that about doing the good works, 
well, we all get to do different good works sometimes. You don't all have to do the same thing. He created each and every one of you for a purpose. I don't know what exactly your purpose is, but I can tell you this. If you want to figure it out, you can't do it on your own. You have to figure it out with God. Only when you follow God do you discover your, your true purpose. Because you can fill yourself with any and everything in this world, and you will not be filled. You can fill yourself with any type of sin you want and keep filling yourself over and over again, but inside yourself, you're going to be empty. You're going to be lacking, and you're going to say, Why, God, why am I not filled? Why is this not working out? God, why, why, why? And God's saying, You haven't truly followed me yet. Once you follow me, I will help you figure out your purpose. The sin you have in your life cannot fill you like I can fill you. We need God in order to figure out our purpose. On a day where we celebrate freedom, we don't just celebrate freedom in the United States, but we celebrate freedom each and every day in our lives. And that is the freedom that we have from sin because of what Jesus did on the cross. And so what I want us to do today is this. I want you to invest in being freed. If you haven't been baptized, this is a time where I'd love to talk to you about it. Not because I want the personal glory of it, but because God wants you to be baptized. He wants you to follow him. And so if you haven't been baptized, please talk to us about that. And if you have been baptized, you better be living freed. You don't have to go back to the old ways of your life, whatever sin it was, whatever worldly pleasure you wanted. You don't have to go back to that anymore. You get to live freed. And so live freed. Don't go back to your old ways, but invest in being freed today. I want to leave all of you with this one question. Have I found freedom? I want each of you to ask yourselves that this week. Have you found freedom in God? Because once you find God, you will find your freedom. If you try to find freedom in the world, you're going to be lost, and you're going to be wanting more. But if you want freedom in God, seek him out. If you need help seeking God out, come talk to one of us in this church. We would love to talk to you about this. Find freedom in God today. Don't go back to the slavery and bondage of sin that was in your past life. But find freedom today. If you need anything today, if you need prayers, if you want to talk about baptism, please come forward or you can come forward afterwards in our coffee grounds room if you want to have a little more intimate place to talk about what's going on. We want to be here for you. So please come forward. Come to the coffee grounds room if you want to and stand as we sing. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fear relieve how precious did thy grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing First of all, I want to thank everybody who took part in this morning's worship service. I hope you feel the way I feel. It was a glorious day. 
It's a wonderful day. And let's not let this be the only day. Let's move it forward. Let's take what we've learned and heard and, and experienced today and, and take it out at these four walls. That's what it's all about, guys. This freedom that rings, it should ring out, at least in Harlingen. It should ring out in our neighborhoods. It should ring out with our friends, our family. It should ring out and continue to ring out. Thank you all for being here this morning, especially you visitors. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Oh, heavenly, loving, caring, merciful God, the Trinity God that is in our lives, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, we plead unto you, we ask you to help us to be submissive to you, to be only submissive to you but to also be submissive to one another. Help us to, to be and to think and act less important than my sister or brother. Father, complete in us the transformation that you started. Complete us in the work that you started in us. God, we do submit to you. We pledge our allegiance to you. And yes, we understand. We understand that in our eyes, in our heart, in our understanding, we live in a, in a blessed place and because you created it. We understand, God, that, that this place fits our needs for the time. And we thank you for that. We do thank you, God, for the fathers that came and, and started all of this. But let us not forget, God, the fathers and your son that started the real freedom. We know that we are saved by your grace, and we thank you for that. God, help us to, to break away from, from um, other gods. Help us to to not submit to those other little gods. Help us to, to submit to you. For only you and, and by you and because of you, we have these incomparable riches of the grace in Jesus. The grace that truly, absolutely, and completely will free us God, uh, we repent from our sins, from our doubts. We repent from our fears. We repent that we give in to the worries of this world. We repent, God, that, that this world surrounds us and, and the angels of this world surround us. And we repent, we repent that, that we listen to that more than we listen to you. God, we repent as a church for the things that we've done and for the things that we have not done. Help us in this, God. Help us to truly be free and ring out this freedom, ring out salvation, and ring out redemption, and be free from all sin. And your son, we pray. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Don't forget, there is a potluck. Everyone is invited. Please join us.